In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the valve plate kit on a Campbell Haasfeld oilless air compressor. We'll get started by removing the pump from the tank. And to do that, we need to disconnect the wire that goes between the motor and the pressure switch. I'll start by removing the pressure switch cover. Now I have access to the wire connections inside the pressure switch. I'll remove these top two wires first. They're the ones that go to the motor. And I'll also remove the ground wire. Now just release the cord relief and pull the wires out of the pressure switch. Now I'll remove the front pump cover. It's held in place with just a couple of bolts. Next I'll remove the air line that runs between the pump and the tank. It's a good idea to make sure you have no pressure in the tank before you do this. Now there's four bolts that connect the pump to the tank. I'll remove those and then I can lift the pump away from the tank. Now that I have the pump removed from the tank, I can remove the rest of the pump cover. It's held in place with just a couple more bolts. Now we have access to the valve plates, the cylinder, the piston, and the connecting rod. Now I'll go ahead and remove the valve plates. As I remove the plates, you'll want to take note of how everything goes together. In fact, it wouldn't be a bad idea to make some drawings or even snap a couple of pictures of this so you know how it all goes back together when it's time to reassemble. With the valve plates removed, now we can begin rebuilding this assembly. I want to be careful here to keep everything in exact order that it came off the compressor so we can get it reassembled correctly. So what I'm going to do is place the parts back in the exact order that they come off of the pump. So here I have the head, one of the valve plates, the shim, the valve reeds, and the lower valve plate. Here's our new valve plate kit. What I want to do is take all the parts out and arrange them in the same order as the pieces we took off of our old pump. We have some new gaskets. I'll set these aside for a second. Our kit comes with two valve plates. You'll notice that one of them has a groove milled in the bottom, and that's the lower valve plate. Then we have our new reed valves, the new shim, the upper valve plate, and those gaskets. One gasket goes to the head, I'll just lay that next to it, and the other gasket goes to the lower valve plate. With everything laid out, now I can begin reassembly, and I'm going to start with a trick. Whenever you have a gasket or another part that needs to get stuck on the underside of something, it's difficult to keep that part in place when you go to reassemble. So what I like to do is just apply a little bit of silicone grease. I'll just coat the o-ring with this. It just takes a light layer. And now when I place it onto the plate, 
that silicone grease will hold it in place. Next, I'll place the reed valve on the lower plate, then the shim, and now the reed valve on the upper plate. And this is another place where just a small amount of that silicone grease will come in handy. Now we'll turn our attention to the new gasket on the valve head. I'll tip the valve head over and clean out all of the old gasket, just using a pick to do this. And I'll take a rag and clean up any dirt that might be on this assembly. And again, I'll coat this gasket with a small amount of the silicone grease. Now I'll place the bolts through all of the layers of the assembly just to make sure everything is aligned. And now I'll place this assembly back onto the cylinder head. Initially, I'm just going to tighten the bolts finger tight just to get everything aligned. Now I can go ahead and tighten the head bolts on our valve plate assembly. At this point, you'll want to consult your owner's manual, a parts diagram, or other literature that the manufacturer might put out concerning the torque values for these bolts. In some cases, there won't be any values listed, as in the case of my pump. In this case, I just want to evenly tighten the bolts until they're secure. I don't want to over tighten anything because I'll risk smashing the gaskets or even stripping out the threads on the aluminum pump housing. Okay, with our pump reassembled, now I can slide the pump and motor assembly back into the housing. Now I'll slide these support brackets in between the pump and the housing and secure it with one of the bolts. And the same on the other side. Now I'll place the pump assembly back onto the tank and secure it with the bolts. Now I'll reconnect the air line between the pump and the tank. Now I'll reinstall the front pump cover. This one can be a little tricky to get everything aligned, so just take your time and make sure all the tabs get lined up on the sides and the top. Now I'll just thread the motor wires back into the pressure switch and snap the strain relief back into place. Then I can go ahead and reconnect my wires. I'll start with the ground screw. and then the hot and the neutral wire. I just line up white with white. And black with black.
and then I can replace the cover.